cigarette smokers in Toronto are used to heading outside and down the street when they want to light up. They have no choice. That is the law. Toronto's medical officer of health now wants the same rules for vaping. Dr. Eileen Davila joins us now from Toronto City Hall. Doctor, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. So what exactly are you asking for in the meeting today? Well, what we're doing today in our meeting is reporting back to the Board of Health in respect of vaping. And this is not the first time we have done this. Uh, we reported back to the Board of Health on the subject of e-cigarettes and their regulations as early as 2014. And suffice it to say that in light of all the emerging data and evidence around the harms associated with these products, including the likelihood that young people are uptaking the product and then subsequently going on to use regular tobacco, we're recommending to the Board of Health that they advocate to other levels of government and that we work with other uh, city divisions here at the local level of government to better regulate these products so that we're creating more uh, health supportive and health promoting environments. Toronto's bylaw currently prohibits smoking within nine meters of an entrance or exit of any public building. So do you want to see the exact same rules apply to cigarette smoking as you do to vaping? Or are there some rules for, for vaping in particular? Well, I think we're at the stage now where we know that we have quite a bit of e-cigarette use happening and the concern is particularly around young people taking up this, this product and its use. So when we look at the most recently available survey data, it shows that from 2017 to 2018, there was a 70% increase in reported use of e-cigarettes and other similar products by youth. That's why we're looking at uh, extending current prohibitions and regulations that currently apply to tobacco to also apply to e-cigarettes. That being said, I think there is still an opportunity. Tobacco continues to be a major source of preventable illness and death. And I think we have an opportunity to look at both products, regular tobacco and e-cigarettes, and think about what kinds of regulations we might put into place to better protect the health of people throughout the city, throughout the province, and in particular, I think we need to focus on young people. Doctor, many people credit vaping with helping them to quit smoking. So what do you say to those who feel this would make quitting harder for them? Well, we're not suggesting that it can't continue to be used, that e-cigarettes can't continue to be used as a harm reduction measure uh, to help people quit using regular tobacco and traditional cigarettes. However, when we look at the data that are currently available, while that had been a hope and a bit of a promise in respect of this product, we're not actually seeing that reflected in the numbers. And instead, as I've mentioned, what we're seeing is young people taking up e-cigarettes, people who've never used either regular tobacco or um, you know, e-cigarettes in the past are now picking up e-cigarettes. And the real harm with that is that we've seen major incidents of lung injury throughout the United States and some reported in Canada. We also know that nicotine is not good for the developing brain and on top of it, we know that young people who start using e-cigarettes, there's a strong association with going on subsequently to using traditional tobacco and regular cigarettes. And on top of it, we don't know yet what the long-term consequences are of using these products, because frankly, they're quite new. Dr. Eileen Davila, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.